So we've just arrived on a fine bright day with a bit of snow on the ground at the flagship moor owned by the RSPB, Gelsdale Nature Reserve. Uh, first impressions is a small car park that's getting a few visitors here. We've seen a blackbird, a chaffinch and a magpie so far. We're going to have a little bit of a look round, see what see, signs we can see in the snow, what birds we can see, what habitat is like and uh, we'll keep you updated. In 2008, Natural England found that RSPB's Geltsdale Nature Reserve in Cumbria had the lowest number of moorland birds compared with surrounding managed grouse moors. We are there to see whether it had managed to turn itself around. Within minutes of walking through the gate, a roe deer runs across the track ahead. Is this a sign of thriving heathland? So we're on the fringes of the heather moorland, so the habitat would be suitable for you know, the small mammals that we'd expect to see, which we might see some signs in the snow. We've seen the, one of the larger mammals there with the roe deer, but plenty of uh, footfall around. Most of them seem to be, and we can hear the dog barking in the background as well, someone's just pulled up. Quite a few dogs are walked in the area, so it would be a concern you know, controlling the public and managing the nature at the same time would have its complications, but definite. There's definitely a sign of dog around here. John starts spotting some familiar techniques the RSPB is using to manage the reserve. So they've obviously tried to maintain the public on a track, the same as what many of the grouse moves would do. By the track, we have a gutter for any of the runoff water to come through. They're then challenging it with a bit of pipe under the road, the same as what they would do on many of the grouse moves, for the water to go down into this wet area. Create a bit of habitat there with the wetlands, which at the moment is frozen. Um, but not a lot of wildlife there at the moment. We quite often get slated on the, you know, why we dug a gutter on a moor track, yet these have done exactly the same here. We've got a tractor that's been off-road and down there, there's a tractor track there. Anything they do, heather burning, predator control, the engineering side of things, the machinery that they use, it's acceptable for them to do. But if a gamekeeper does that same thing, they get criticised for doing it. So it's bad for the environment, it's bad for the nature. The 2008 report found that not only had hen harrier populations failed, but the reserve had a large amount of carrion crows. When I looked on the website, the species that you would expect to see, the magpie and the carrion crow, which we've seen plenty of, doesn't appear on the website. The species that do appear on the website, which draws here as a visitor, we've not seen them as yet. We've got a buzzard going across us just to you know. It's a common buzzard, there's about 70,000 pairs. It's not a rare species, it's green listed. Test from. A rare treat. The kestrel swoops down to sink its claws into a vole or mouse, which it then tucks into on a nearby fence post. Uh, in decline, the kestrel. We used to see them quite a lot. Definitely in a big decline and not enough being done into finding out why. Lots of different theories on why they've gone down. Is it because the prey species is in decline? Is the prey species have been taken by other raptors, owls, kites, buzzards? Um, we really need to do more to help that particular species. Next stop, the supposed highlight of the ramble round Geltsdale, a tarn with a viewing platform. But whatever wonders previous visitors saw may never be known. Oh, wet. Obviously not maintained. The ranger hasn't been round to ensure that the visitors thoughts that they leave. That goes back to 2018. Um, you thought that as a ranger you would be interested to find out what the visitors were spotting and making a note of. They've taken the effort to make a note of it. It should be, should be the effort to keep the records straight. Maybe then they could update the website so that we do see the species that are found here rather than what they think we should find here. No black grouse, no hen harriers. The RSPB website lists barn owls, curlew, lapwings and wingchat. We saw evidence of pheasant too, but the most activity we saw was at a bird feeding station. Blue tits are using it well. Despite the vast wealth of the charity, which made £147 million in the 2019 to 2020 financial year, the visitor centre, like the rest of the reserve, is unstaffed. Even the disabled's toilets are locked. Studies consistently show the RSPB has failed to create habitats at Geltsdale that attract the birds it wants. If you're a landowner, you have to make a living, or you're entitled to make a living for your land. So at Geltsdale, for example, if you were, if you owned it, you and you looked at it and said, I'm going to make a living out of this, well, I'm, 
I might be able to get a bit of rent for the grazing. I could plant a few trees. Might, that wouldn't make me any money, but I might get some subsidy. And I could run a grouse mall and sell the grouse shooting for a 150 pound of rice or whatever. And I would get an income. The RSPB's model is you get rid of all that and then you build a car park and it's subsidized by the, the NGO. Well, it's absolutely stunning landscape. There's an awful lot of fencing gone on, tree planting, not a lot of bracken control. The tree planting is probably going to spoil the view of some of that landscape. But I suppose it's the right tree in the right place that, that counts. Pretty disappointed in what the number that we have seen for a, a reserve that is the flagship and the money that's been spent on it. They criticise all the other moorland management. I would expect to see more than what we have done when we've come here. Places like Abernethy, uh, well, a lot of the places. I mean, if you look at uh, more accessible places like Geltstar, it would be very interesting to know how successful they are um, in producing what you would think the end product was, which is more birds and more birds from red listed species. I joined the RSPB or the Young Ornithologist Club way back in the 70s when I was only nine years old. It's a shame to see the organisation has changed very much from conservation, which I'm fully hat on, hand on heart agree with that we should be doing, has turned into a political organisation that criticises the way things other people are doing it, yet does them exact same things on its reserves that it manages.